So in this video, we will cover the definition for the placenta, various parts, measurements, functions, and structure, and development, and various types of placenta. By definition, the placenta is discoid, decidual, hemochorial, and villous structure. And these terms are denoting the physical appearance and properties of the placenta. And remember, the placenta is the site where maternal and fetal tissue come in direct contact. So here, at this particular area, you can clearly see this is the maternal part, uterine endometrium region where implantation happened. And this is the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is connecting the developing fetus and the maternal parts. And this is the placenta. The placenta is the site where both fetal blood and the maternal blood will be in contact with each other, but no rejection happens. And the measurements, the diameter of the placenta will be around 15 to 20 centimeter. And its thickness will be varying at various parts. And the center, the thickness will be at about 3 centimeter. And it weighs about 500 gram. It is variable. And remember, full term placenta weighs about 30% of the uterine wall. So you can clearly see. If you consider this entire uterine wall, only the 30% portion only will be occupied by the placenta, this part. The placenta shows two surfaces, fetal surface and maternal surface. The fetal surface will be at the fetal side, what you see here will be the fetal surface and to this surface the umbilical cord will get attached. And the opposite surface is the maternal surface. Remember, the fetal surface will be smooth and shows presence of amnio. And the maternal surface will be roughened. These two pictures are showing. One is the fetal surface to show the presence of attachment of the umbilical cord. Other surface is rough. And this surface is the maternal surface which is showing multiple cotyledons. And the peripheral margins of the placenta will be continuous with the fetal membrane. See what are the functions of the placenta. Number one, exchange function. The placenta transports the respiratory gases and also the electrolytes, nutrition, water across the placenta from maternal blood to the fetal blood. Second function is placental barrier. The placenta acts as a barrier to prevent the entry of pathogens to the fetus from maternal blood. But certain viruses can cross this placental barrier. Third function is excretory function. The metabolic waste products from the fetal blood will be transported across the placenta to reach to the maternal blood. And that will be excreted through the maternal blood. Next function, transportation of maternal antibodies to the fetus, especially immunoglobulin G. Last function, the placenta synthesizes certain hormones like progesterone, estrogen and also HCG hormone that is human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. So these are the important functions of placenta. Is decidua. The uterine endometrium after the implantation of the embryo is called as decidua. At decidua, decidual reaction happens. That means the stromal cells enlarges and become vacuolated and glycogen and lipid will be stored in this. This process is called as a decidual reaction. In the decidua we have three types. Decidua basalis, decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis. What is decidua basalis? The part of the decidua at which the placenta is formed is called as decidua basalis. Next is decidua capsularis. That is the part of the decidua which separates from the uterine cavity. 
Next is decidua parietalis. The rest of the parts of the decidua is called as rust. This one, decidua parietalis. So these are the three varieties of decidua: decidua basalis, decidua capsularis, and decidua parietalis. How placenta is developed? So before going to the detailed explanation of development of placenta, we have brush up our knowledge about the morula. So the morula will divide into the cells like outer cell mass called as trophoblast and the inner cell mass called as embryoblast and within the morula the cavity appears that is the blastocysti cavity and this trophoblast can be differentiated into two types one is cytotrophoblast another is syncytio trophoblast so here we can see the cytotrophoblast and syncytio trophoblast With the formation and development of the placenta, we have to go back to the knowledge about the morula. So we have learned that the cells of the morula will be differentiating into two types, inner cell mass and outer trophoblasts. And remember, these trophoblasts are gradually dividing into two varieties, cytotrophoblast and syncytio, syncytio trophoblast. So what you see here will be the cytotrophoblast and periphery will be syncytio trophoblast. So this we have learned at the time of implantation. And remember the syncytio trophoblast proliferate to form multiple layers with the multinuclei. So the cell boundaries of these trophoblastic cells are lost and we can see a unit with multiple nuclei and the inner cytotrophoblast form extra embryonic mesoderm and remember the chorion is formed by extra embryonic mesoderm and the trophoblast so a single chorionic part that will be contributed by the extra embryonic mesoderm and also the trophoblast which are present We are learning how exactly the placenta is formed, the formation of the placenta. So before learning the details of formation of the placenta, we are supposed to know how various villi are formed. Structurally, the placenta contains villi, chorionic villi. So the villi are the finger-like processes which act as functional element of placenta. So Inside the placenta, we can see several villi. This is one villus, another villus, another villus. So these villi are surrounded by maternal blood. We can clearly see this is the maternal part of the placenta and this will be the fetal part. So from maternal part, the maternal blood vessels are spurting out here. And these are the fetal vessels and inside the villus, the fetal blood vessels are coming and each villus this is a villus this will be surrounded by the maternal blood vessels and remember in, e, in the core of each villi there are capillaries in which fetal blood will be present so inside the villus the fetal blood and surrounding the villus the maternal blood so this is the area where exchange can happen between the fetal blood and the maternal blood step is formation of lacunae or spaces so lacunae are small cavities that appear in the syncytio trophoblast so here we can see so this is the area of the syncytio trophoblast tiny cavities appears in this syncytio trophoblast region these are called as lacunae gradually these lacunae enlarge and to it uterine capillaries are breaking up so you can clearly see this is the area of the maternal side the uterine blood vessels can be seen maternal blood vessels that will spurt out and it will be breaking into this area the cytotrophoblasts enter into core of the trabeculae to form primary chorionic villi so this is the area of the cytotrophoblasts so that will enter to this trabecular region and it will form the primary chorionic villus. So this is the area where primary chorionic villus is formed. 
and in between these villi you can see a space that is called as intervillus space in between each villus there will be intervillus space what is secondary villus the extra embryonic mesoderm invert into the primary villus so already the primary villus is formed here inside this primary villus this is the extra embryonic mesoderm that is the chorionic area that will be invading inside it once this extra embryonic mesodermal portion is invading to this primary villus that primary villus is converted into secondary villus then again gradually this secondary villus will be converted into tertiary villus so what is tertiary villus additional to this extra embryonic mesoderm the branches from umbilical vessels that will be growing inside the secondary villus so once inside the secondary villus the branches from umbilical vessels are entering then you can call it as tertiary villi so these are the three villus to learn primary villus secondary villus and the tertiary villus respectively so this is the area here the maternal blood will be present and here the fetal blood will be present so this is the area of exchange between the maternal blood and the fetal blood so this is the clear cut picture to explain you everything so he we could see the primary villus and the lacunae are present and this is the decidua basalis that is the uterine endometrium where that is the maternal part you can see maternal vessels that will be growing here and this is the secondary villus extra embryonic mesoderm will be entering to second primary villus then it is converted to secondary villus further the fetal vessels that is the umbilical vessels are branching and spurting out to the secondary villus in order to get it converted into tertiary villus that the villi are offshoots from the surface of trophoblast and this villi forms the chorionic villi the chorionic villi formed how the trophoblast grow into surrounding decidua and the villi which are related related to decidua capsularis is de getting degenerated these villi are called as chorion leve so this is the area where chorion leve are formed and the villi which are present at the area of the formation of the placenta that will form the chorion frondosa so this is the area where the chorion frondosum is present that area the placenta will be forming now let us learn the detailed structure of the placenta so already we mentioned that structurally placenta contains the chorionic villi multiple number of chorionic villi so these are all the chorionic villi and this placenta shows two surfaces the maternal surface and the fetal surface at the fetal surface we have the chorionic plate and at the maternal surface we have the basal plate so the basal plate consists of the decidua basalis so this is the area of decidua basalis and also we have outer and inner layer of syncytial trophoblast and there will be an outer shell of trophoblast this outermost part this is the outer shell of trophoblast and the chorionic plate that is at the fetal side that receives the umbilical cord this is the umbilical cord and this part consists of cytotrophoblast and syncytial trophoblast the cytotrophoblast also will be there syncytial trophoblast also will be there and what are intervillus space this is one villus this is another villus so the space between the intervillus space is present here in between two adjacent villi the space is called as intervillus space and these villi can be of primary villus secondary villus or the tertiary villus the detailed structure of these villi already we have seen let us see what are the different types of placenta the placenta can be categorized based on various criteria so first we are classifying the placenta according to the shape so these are the varieties which are seen 
number 1 by discoidal so when it consists of two disks so the placenta consists of two disks existing as two disks um, here one disk and here one disk if the shape is like this that can be called as bi discoidal second is lobed the placenta itself is divided into various lobes so this is one lobe this is another lobe this is another lobe like that these are lobed diffuse means the chorionic will like persist all around the blastocyst and the placenta is very thin and it may not be with the shape of a disc so this is that diffuse type you cannot appreciate the disc shape here next is fenestrated so fenestrated placenta means there will be a hole in the placental disc so this is the placental disc there is a hole such placenta are called as fenestrated then placenta sucks and ureter so here small part of the placenta is separated from the main part so you can see from the main part of the placenta a separated small piece will be existing see what are the functions of the placenta number one exchange function the placenta transports the respiratory gases and also the electrolytes nutrition water across the placenta from maternal blood to the fetal blood second function is placental barrier the placenta acts as a barrier to prevent the entry of pathogens to the fetus from maternal blood see what are the various types of the placenta according to attachment of umbilical cord so this is the normal one umbilical cord is getting attached to the placenta another variety is the marginal where the umbilical cord will get attached to the margin for quick means the umbilical vessels are dividing before reaching to the placenta itself and velamentous insertion means the blood vessels are attached to the amnion and where they are they are ramifying before reaching to the placenta itself that will ramify next type is placenta previa placenta previa previa means the position of the placenta can be at an abnormal site the placenta may not be exactly in the normal site so such varieties are called as placenta previa so this is the picture to show you the normal position of the placenta and this is the placenta previa placenta previa itself is having various types so the placenta is shifted towards the lower uterine segment here so this is an example for placenta previa